The thing that pressed upon me most was the awful state of the land. I seemed to hear the cry of liberty as nothing more than the hiss of the serpent. Could anybody describe the state of the United States more eloquently than Margaret MacDonald, who had that vision in 1883, which they have attributed to as being the first um, <clears throat> revelation of um, the rapture, which of course I don't believe it is, and in fact I fear that she is saying exactly the opposite, and when she says that the people, my people are waiting for something, but they know not what for, that um, the great deception has been those who are propagating the pre-tribulation rapture. Because I think it's quite plain that we are well into the tribulations. So <clears throat> I have got a few things to show you tonight and I want to start off with the most important and which um, is something that I just came across by accident. Um, while I was watching this one here I will finish with that is um, Bono and all the rest of them on Jimmy Gimmel's show all stating that if we don't um, if we don't help those with AIDS we are all going to hell so that's just one of the um, not so subtle messages that we've been given today but this is one here, and this is what I fear, that while Christians are so busy concentrating on the rapture, that underneath your nose the most hideous, heinous um, bills are being passed, which are going to destroy um, God's children and the generation and, and humanity itself. So I'm just going to play you this amazing lady, and it's talking about um, the vaccine um, programs in the States, and she's saying that now if you um, insert certain states you cannot get education if you are not fully vaccinated and she also speaks of the fact that uh, 60 million dollars worth of um, claims were paid out by the American government just in 2015 for um, for injuries caused by flu vac vaccine alone and the government has never paid out a single farthing not even a penny to those who have brought claims. This boggles the mind. This is like sponsoring a resolution in the Congress that says the Holocaust never happened. There was no World War II. Uh, it's, it's extraordinary uh, that this career politician is so craven, so desperate for big pharma contributions that he denies the reality you see on your screen today. Lori, lay it on us. What's the truth about vaccination injuries? It's really horrific, Roger. And I'll tell you, we actually left California about three months ago because we just couldn't take the politics anymore. As parents, uh, my husband and I were horrified to see multiple egregious bills and legislation that were being introduced and being converted into law in California. SB 277 is the most egregious, but there are others that are systemically stripping away parental rights. And I'll tell you, SB 277 is even worse than what you just described. It is uh, completely ripe for the right attorney to come in and overturn it because the Constitution of California is written in such a way that says no one shall be denied access to education. And you can actually be HIV positive, you can be hepatitis B positive, and still attend school. But if you don't get 22 vaccines by the age of five, you are denied access to public and private education in the state of California. So now California joins the likes of West Virginia and Mississippi, which are the other two states that have mandatory vaccine laws in order to have access to education. And by the way, both of those states, West Virginia and Mississippi, have the highest infant mortality rates of any other states in the, in, in the nation. So we've watched as this bill has rolled out into law now, uh, autism rates continue to escalate in California. 
people are leaving California in droves. We saw, you know, the the court case that just was ruled on last night uh, in San Francisco with uh, the, you know, illegal immigrant. And I, there's just so much. Okay, so, um, yeah, I guess uh, that, that's enough for that. And I'll leave the link and hopefully you'll look it up because this is my concern that uh, while we're all concentrating on the rapture, this is what is happening and you're going to end up with each year that, that it doesn't happen. Um, and not only that, I believe as I'm doing these videos of people like um, who have these Christian ministries, uh, you know, such as um, Barry Scarborough and what have you, that they are not going to be raptured anyway and a lot of people with them. So there's going to be a whole lot of Christians behind, you know, um, unprepared for what they're going to have to go through and it's going to be terrible. So the next thing that I came across was um, on the tail of uh, the horrendous carry-on that's going on now with General Flynn um, is the Pope and this is the Pope. Um, creating, he's at an interfaith meeting and creating a new word, the, the word God's presence is now obviously with the Muslims and I want you to watch this girl who is, um, has lost everyone in the world bar none and um, is pulling non-existent tears out her, her eyes. You know, I mean, I lost my father when I was two and a half years old and I can't um, stop the tears even now. So this is an absolute psyop that they are um, planting in your mind. And um, so it's just like the, the end one. If you don't help the AIDS victims, you're going to hell. And the Pope is also telling you, obviously, if uh, you do not uh, accept the Muslims, you also will be going to hell. What's so, going wrong in Cal So... Um, here it is here, and here we have the young lady who was so arrogant, our news, news reader, who so arrogantly called um, this daughter of, uh, of uh, Clockwork, you know, Clockwork Orange, who, who was that guy? Um, oh, you know, the guy who, who did Clockwork Orange, his daughter Vivian, and um, who was at a meeting, uh, this is quite several years ago, just um, standing up for free speech and um, Stanley Kubrick's daughter. And um, and she had a sign, and so this arrogant piece of... Oh, ex-generation or whatever, uh, called her um, a lunatic. You know, she's not having a lunatic um, in front of her. And if you uh, go yeah, and look at Miss Kubrick, she's anything but a lunatic. What was he trying but to they're cover so up busy was he trying to protect? filling we themselves, now that he is thinking that Flynn is going to... Um, I get the feeling that it has a long way to go yet. And you are Rebecca really Wright happy about York, that, aren't you, you Rebecca? Pope Francis has met with a group of Rohingya Muslim refugees who fled Myanmar in neighbouring Bangladesh. The Catholic leader asked for their forgiveness for the world's indifference to their suffering. The BBC's Martin Bashir reports. On the fifth day of his visit to South Asia, Pope Francis arrived in typically unpretentious style at an interfaith gathering in Dhaka. In the audience were 16 Rohingya adults and children who'd fled from Myanmar. One of them was 12-year-old Shokat Ara. Shokat's entire family lived in a village in Rakhine State when the army arrived in September. I'm sure she'll be getting the next Nobel Peace Prize. Not in once here. What happened, she said. They shouted, you Rohingyas, you yeah. Bengalis, and then killed everyone. They killed my aunt, my uncle and others in the village. No tears yet. No, you rub, rub. No, I can't see anything wet, dear. They killed my whole family. My four brothers, my sister and my parents are dead. I have no one left. The Pope invited the refugees onto the stage and blessed all of them, including Shokat. And having not used the word once during his visit, he decided to give a name to the people and their suffering. The presence of God today, he said, is also called 
Rohingya. What a, a ludicrous visit thing. Brought global attention to the suffering and comfort to a child who's lost everything. Back here now, and a man has died after being. What a ludicrous lot of popcorn. But that is exactly how they are priming you for accepting this one world religion um, and him as at the head of it. So I think that is the end and we will just finish with this. Maybe you're still watching. It doesn't matter if you miss this because this is just classic American rubbish. But sadly, I even heard Jonathan Clegg claim that this man here, Bono, is saved. Even though he's predicting the destruction of New York and uh, in his latest songs and relishing every minute of it. So this is how... I will sign off this video and um, hopefully right. you will look up these things Let's to yourself and, and um, look up um, look up Margaret MacDonald's that son of a uh, vision, please. It's inside. It's glowing. We're lucky. We're rich. We're not. Sip martini for much of a cup, yeah. Valentiaga to carry my cup. Tis the season, our Bitcoin stocks doing swell. Okay, so that's a new um, that's a new requirement for getting into um, heaven, according to Hollywood. And of course, you'll believe it if you listen to Harry, and they have a little um, cameo by the late former president who seems to be um, insinuating his face everywhere he can, shadowing Trump. But um, I think it's on this one, not too sure you can find it yourself. Um, no, I don't think it is on this one actually. It just alludes to it. So um, yeah, please just um, Watch these people. Watch Prince Harry is giving the Illuminati signal, just as this uh, the man in the the masseuse on that video clearly gave the Illuminati signal, and that you know just to show you that this is all part of their plan. So, thanks for watching. Um, I hope it's a blessing. Don't be don't be um, you know don't be so sure that you know what you're you're talking about until you actually look into some of the things that. Um, that I'm saying to you. Jesus wants to save you.